coots, poodoo, water chickens, whatever you call them, I know where you can find thousands. My waterfowl roots run deep in the bayous of South Louisiana, but as an adult, I've been blessed to hunt all over North America. A funny thing happens when I tell waterfowlers not from Louisiana that I eat poodoo. Light leaves their eyes while disbelief and fear set in. Their response is often of disgust, and my reply is, well, have you ever eaten them when a Cajun is cooking? These poodoo love the native grasses of South Louisiana. So one thing is certain, we won't be going hungry at the duck camp. That mossy oak duck blind blends right in by the time they see it. It's a sin shoot where they're going, not where they've been. It's steam rolling from the top of the blind. Fresh duck cut up tastes just right. I love living life with my eyes to the sky. When they first picked up the piece of property out here, Jay and James, we only had the back hut, which we called the uh, hobo hut. We traded an old 1984 Jeep for it. It's the camp in the back that we use now as the hobo, uh, as the bunkhouse. Quickly grew out of that, needed a bathroom and shower, so we bought this camp here. Had it pulled by the shrimp boat all the way here. It took two and a half days. And then when they purchased this very nice, luxurious camp, we decided to call the community the Hobo Hill. Bacon-wrapped quail with green onions. Cold-blooded gators and ice-cold beer. Birds that hunt and birds that are hunted. Catfish are caught and grills are lit. Mud boats, shrimp boats. This doesn't look like the lives of most folks, but it's the life we live for. Come on, baby, let's ride. Tonight, we're cooking a pool dune on dewy gumbo with potato salad. We can't make this gumbo without the main ingredient. Lucky for us, we know where to find them, and Jay and Sean are the perfect men for the job. They're headed out to harvest a mess of poodoo for tonight's meal. While the guys are shooting some fresh poodoo for the gumbo, let me show you something. This is a dark Cajun roux, and the trick to a dark Cajun roux is to go low and slow, cook it in this black iron pot, and never stop stirring it, scraping the bottom so it doesn't burn. Now the guys last night spent an hour and a half, two hours cooking this roux. That's the key to a great gumbo. Have a great roux. Look, you see how they forming up right over there, James? There are thousands of poodoo on this lease, and they're a clear signal to migrating ducks and to us hunters that there is an abundance of food in the area. Poodoo translates to water chickens, and I don't think it's just because how they run on the water or aren't great flyers. I think they've earned that name because when cooked correctly, their breast meat are more akin to dark meat chicken than typical waterfowl. They are delicious, and I bet that anyone that tells you otherwise has never cooked one up. Follow this preparation and recipe, and I promise you'll think twice about passing up a shot on poodoo on your next duck hunt. I'm gonna give him the Forrest Gump wave. Enough for a gumbo? Yeah, yeah we got I think we'll be all right. I think we'll be all right. Yeah, we're going to be all right with that. Those big boys like to eat. I think that's enough pool, dude. Thank you. 45, three man limit. Put that spoon in there. You see? The easiest method to extract the breast meat from these poodoo is to pull the wings off of the body. The breastplate comes right out. Yeah. 
Great Cajun gumbos are made with five basic groups of ingredients. A strong chocolate colored roux, the Cajun trinity, a flavorful stock, a fresh primary protein, in this case puldu, and quality smoked sausage like this andouille from Bourgeois Meat Market. The roux is warming back up right now and I like to just add this sausage right into the roux and let it start rendering out into that roux. The most underrated ingredient to a good gumbo is a great smoked sausage. And you can always tell a good undoing by seeing chunks of fat and meat studded within that sausage. That's just gonna add so much more hardiness and smokiness and salt into that gumbo. That's some really good stuff. So the sausage has been cooking in this hot roux for about 15 minutes. It smells delicious, looking good. Next thing is to add this stock to your roux. This is about a half duck, half chicken stock. Just wanna just keep stirring that in. Beautiful. <laughs> a gumbo is in a category of its own, but when talking about consistency, it should eat like a soup without rice and eat like a stew with rice. Hoodoo are ready to go in this gumbo. I soaked them in a little salt and water and this just helps pull some of that blood out since they were just shot. Also, we kept the breastplate on and then that breast right on top. That's just gonna go straight into the gumbo just like this. Last thing this gumbo needs is a few bay leaves before we let this dish marry together. All right, we got everything in the pot. It's about an hour and a half till we're ready to eat. The teal got the best of us this morning. So now that this gumbo is cooking for a couple hours, Ryan and I decide to leave the crew behind and head out to an evening redemption hunt. We got all pool do in front. That's what we came for right there. Blakely and I didn't shoot the greatest on this other hunt and we moved blinds a couple times. So we said we're gonna come back this evening, see if we can capitalize on what we learned from, uh, from being here. Look at that duck just wanting to come in, bro. He's just circling, waiting for us to get out of the way. They seem to be 10 feet off the bank. Maybe overthinking my decoy spread, but. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ryan and I are barely set up before the first group of teal sit right in our laps. Get ready, bro. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Come sock. I like it. I mean, we just got here. You standing up. <laughs> they came in, I mean. They want to be here. Nice start, bro. That's how we like to start a hunt. Hopefully, that's a good sign for what's to come this evening. Oh, there are two right here. Coming? Yep. <laughs> he son of a bitch. <laughs> saw a gun right there, huh? That's all right. It happens. I'm gonna put my earplugs in. Oh my God. That was terrible. But just like a good defensive back, you get burned, you gotta get back right on the line, play ball. I ain't got time to feel sorry for myself for being a bad shot. Back of the graze. They're pretty groups just like doing their thing around here. Watching the wildlife, bro. Listen to them. I love the sound of pool dude, bro. I really do. They're like funny little son of a guns. 
all the little noises they make. All right, it's just about sunset, which means shooting time's about done. Fun little hunt out here. I just really enjoy doing this and uh, spending time with friends, but all good things must come to an end. I'm thinking about that pool doing on Dewey Gumbo, getting tender tender in that pot, and I'm getting hungry, so let's go eat. This hunt wasn't quite the redemption hunt we hoped for. My shooting woes continued, but it was nice to see some great groups of teal work this marsh against these cypress trees. It's time to pack it in and go check on the pool to gumbo that's been cooking for the last couple hours at the camp. So when the temperature drops in South Louisiana, people run to the kitchen to cook gumbo. And that's exactly what we did here with our pool dew and our dewy gumbo. Now there's three fundamental things that make a gumbo a gumbo in my opinion. And that's a good dark Cajun roux. That's a great stock. In this case, it's a duck and chicken stock. And there's also the Trinity. And the Trinity is onion, celery, and bell pepper. And it goes in just about every Cajun dish there is. Other than those three main ingredients, there's not a lot of other things that season it because your smoked sausage has so much flavor, pepper, garlic, heat. And so I typically only season my gumbo with salt, pepper, hot sauce, and I finish it with green onions. I don't know where the combination of potato salad and gumbo comes from, but where we're from, you rarely see a dinner table with these two dishes not side by side. As this potato salad heats up and as you eat your gumbo, the potato salad kind of melts into the sauce and it changes, it evolves as you go on through your bowl. And I always think that's a fun part when food does that. This Pudu gumbo is going to be delicious. Boys and I are hungry, so it's time to kick back, dig in, and get ready for our last hunt tomorrow. Gumbo 94.9 and South Louisiana Weekend says welcome. Thank you all so much for listening in as we hear Swamp Poppin' and Papa Toppin'. Well, look here, the Couillons from the Duck Camp Dinners are listening in out there at the Hoboville. That's their camp out there in Gibson. Appreciate y'all listening, guys. I guarantee you they got some bubbles in the head out there today. Oh, yeah, I got a Pedro is a card game predominantly found in South Louisiana. It is always played with a partner and the goal is to collect trump cards in order to make your bet. In South Louisiana, there are two sets of rules that are the subject of many heated arguments around the card table. Follow the Suit is mostly played in Lafouche Parish and Cutthroat, which is played in Terrebonne Parish. Tonight, it's Cutthroat. Got his bib, huh? Ooh, I was gonna get that bib. You got your little bib. Huh? Got my little bib, man. Tomorrow's our last morning hunt, and after a fun five days at the duck camp, we're all excited to get back to dry land with cools of ducks and catfish. As for tonight, we'll enjoy these cards and fine cigars while working up a few bobos in the head. I've got a bobo.